And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Glad you're with us. Let's jump right back in to our, our series right here, Praise God. Talking and ministering on the redeemed from the curse. Everybody say redeemed from the curse. Redeemed from the curse. Hallelujah. Um, so we, talk, we, we talked about initially um, the covenant of God with God made with Abraham. Then we talked about the addition of the law, the blessings and the cursing. Then we, last week we were covering that Jesus came to fulfill the law. I mean, we got into the relationship side of this. We, we really have majored on the relationship side and, and what some of these things are really pointing to. And they're not pointing to uh, being released from the bondage of the law so you can go do whatever you want to do. Okay? That it, it releases us from a do's and don't system to a relationship where you love God, therefore you want to honor him with your life and what you do. Can you say amen? amen. That the moral code of God is still the moral code of God. It doesn't change because we're no longer under the law. See, what we're not under the law for is we are not going to achieve our righteousness and our restoration of um, fellowship and or kinship with God through the law. It doesn't mean that the things that God says you, you don't do, stop be, being don't do. The power to don't do is now vested in the power of being in relationship with him and the heart to honor and to please him and not to displease him. Amen. You know, God, listen, even under the initial creation before the fall, God gave a don't. See, people act like God never said don't do it. Oh, if Adam and Eve weren't under grace, nobody was. Okay? Had some yin-yang tell me one time, you know, that Adam and Eve didn't have the Holy Spirit like we did. We do. Yeah, I call them a yin-yang. I mean, was, I think in all of Christendom, my time, that's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They hadn't fallen. God actually took his, whole, his spirit and put it into Adam and made him a speaking spirit. But he didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. You need a visit to Dr. Phil. All right? Because you really need to hear the words, you're an idiot. <laughs> okay? All right. Jerry, would you mind? I want to get down off of here. Hallelujah. I should have done this before church started, but I didn't. So now we're doing it now. All right. And I don't have a pole in the middle to line myself up with. <laughs> Did you, I don't know if y'all know this or not. I confessed. You should do it in the pulpit at the at, at business park. That when we get our own building, there will not be a pole in the middle. Y'all remember that? There ain't a pole in the middle. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I, we did that long enough. All right. <clears throat> and so Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill the Abrahamic covenant. And we've been redeemed from the curse and made heirs of Abraham's promise. Okay. If you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, <clears throat> let's go and see some of this, um, this in action of how strong covenant is, what God wanted to bring us into. Because see, law, if you don't understand what it was all about, will become a hindrance and a, a bondage to people. And it did in the Old Testament. Remember, Jesus came and he showed us the Father. He said in the Gospel of John, I only do those things which I see my Father do. Amen? So he went round about the villages teaching, preaching, and healing. Amen? He did many signs, wonders, and miracles. Never, I, I did, he just never uh, actually put something on somebody to teach them a lesson, to kill them. Hello? And it, what, what I mean by that, he didn't, get, he didn't strike people down with uh, leprosy. 
even in the book, book of Acts where um, the governor's uh, aide was trying to, to deter him from the gospel, okay, I believe Elimaeus or, what, Elimaeus or whatever that name is, I'll just say it in tongues, how about that, okay, uh, a mist came on him, you know, it, it wasn't a sickness, okay, he wasn't made sick, we, we got people who teach all the time that God makes people sick, you know, as part of his plan to teach them something, and um, so it goes against the covenant, all right, now, looking in Luke 13, we're looking around verse 11, um, it says, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and in no wise lift herself up. Now, this wasn't just sickness. This was a spirit of infirmity. There was a demon spirit enforcing this boat over, bowed over uh, in her body, you know, it was being enforced by a demon spirit. So it wasn't just, you know, a matter of healing. It, I mean, the devil had to go out too. Are you here? And uh, Jesus saw her and called her unto him and said unto the woman, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. He, he released the power. He released her from the captivity of that spirit. Okay? Now, well, how do I know the difference, Holy Ghost? The only way you're going to know the difference between if something is a demon spirit enforcing a disease on somebody or if it's a disease, you know, I mean, <clears throat> you can have a spirit of cancer or you could be, have gotten cancer. Now, the effects are the same in the body, but how you deal with it can be different. Okay? Because they don't just need a healing. They need to have be delivered from the power of that spirit. How would I know um, about, well, two ways, really. Yeah. Word of knowledge, the Holy Ghost says there's a demon spirit involved. Or the discerning of spirits, you look into the spirit realm and you see it. Okay. Oh, there's a demon there. Uh, Dad Hagen talks about a woman who had lung cancer and she was given like 30 days to die and so forth. She came to the meeting. And he looked, and in spirit, he saw that demon wrapped around her, her ribs. He told her he had to let her go. And he said, I don't want to, we, but I will let you tell me to. He said, I command you to. And then I get on out of the, ran him out of the building. He was, he was over in the spirit. That was discerning of spirits. She went back to the doctor the next day, told him to run tests. They said, we don't need to run tests. She said, well, just, just humor me and run them. Came back, and there was nothing. They kept running more tests. Said, we don't know what to say. It's gone. See? Hallelujah. <coughs> so let's go on. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight. And, and we're not talking about the woman with the issue of blood now. We're talking about the woman here bowed over. And she was made straight and glorified God and the ruler of the synagogue. Here we go with the religious folk. Answered with indignation. <laughs> because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. <laughs> oh, my. He don't give a rip about that woman. He doesn't care that she got delivered. He doesn't care that she's made whole and standing up straight. All he cares about is the law. Because the law says you can't work on the Sabbath. I mean, listen. And listen to what this idiot says. There are six days in which men ought to work, and them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath. Can't you just hear the putrid disgust because somebody violated the law? And then Jesus said to him, yeah, let's call it like it is. Thou hypocrite. You don't care about a woman getting healed. You ain't cared about her all these years. Doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose an ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And listen, listen to what Jesus goes on and says. 
Because, see, they're so caught up with the law, they're missing the promise. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, stop and underline that. Now, look, if you don't have a Bible you can write in or underline in, come to me at Janie or, Janie or Jessica at the service. We can order you one of these uh, Kenneth E. Hagen Rama edition Bibles. You're allowed to write and, and mark in those. Okay? They're made, designed that you can write and mark in them. Okay? You can put that other one away for a showcase piece, but get you one you can write in. Okay? All right. And ought not this woman be a daughter of Abraham? Now, let me just kind of undress that for you and show you what that means, being a covenant partner. She's in covenant with God. She's a daughter of Abraham. See that Jesus referred to the covenant. I said Jesus referred to the covenant. Right there. She has a right to be healed. And you ain't done nothing about it all these years. How long was it? We know that it was 18. Oh, not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound. Lo, these 18 years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? And when they said these things, all of his adversaries were ashamed, and all, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Wow. So here we are. The, the law itself became, as it were, a curse to people. Because they were trying to adhere to all of it to do what it could not do. So Jesus comes to this woman and get, heals her on the Sabbath, looses her. You are loosed from your infirmity. Well, why did he say loose? Why didn't he just say you, you be healed? Mm -hmm. Because she had a spirit of infirmity. He had to loose her from that authority. And then he gives the reasoning why she could be loose. She's a daughter of Abraham. Hallelujah. She's under covenant with God. And, and God is Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Amen. He's Jehovah. Um, oh, gosh. I, I, get, I just get mixed up with him. I don't have them all written down. But he's her uh, captain, Tzitkenu, her righteousness. Okay. He is Jehovah What's the one I'm looking for? Come on now. Let's get the right one. Uh, Nisi, the banner of victory, the Lord your victor. Yes. He conquers evil spirits. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yep. And so he conquers that uh, spirit's authority in her life based on the fact that she's a daughter of Abraham. She's in covenant. The covenant gives him right to loose her. Amen. I said amen. amen. And so they get mad. Religious folks will always get mad. They get mad over um, people getting stuff that doesn't fall under their uh, organizational uh, hierarchical um, flow chart of who can do what, when, where, and how. Amen. Are you here? You gone home? It upset them, probably because all the people knew that they were just a bunch of money-milking dogs. They, weren't care they didn't care about the people. They didn't care about their health, their healing. They didn't care about their wholeness. They, carried, they cared about their position of authority and power. And you can hide all you want to about behind a bunch of lingo and hide behind all a bunch of stuff if you want to, but the heart will be revealed and it will be exposed. Amen. You know, well, I, I care more because I got a bigger church. It don't mean nothing. I got a bigger ministry. I don't mean nothing. I've had people come in here and try to take people out of our church because they had the concept their ministry was more important than mine. Literally did. I knew you wouldn't mind. I said, well, yeah, I do mind. We need them. 
This church needs them. Hello? And ultimately, it planted seeds in the people that won't open. They ended up leaving because seeds were planted by someone who's walking in in arrogance. There you go. I mean, that's the way it, that's the way it was. You know? My ministry is bigger than yours. They need to come work for, with me. I had one person tell somebody one time in our church, said, you need to get out of the church. We ain't doing nothing. Come help me. Well, they were doing something. You know? Well, that's wrong. Amen? So let me just say this, and we'll move on from here. If your heart is not for the people, you will be exposed. It will show up. It will manifest itself. Amen. Jesus' his heart was for the people more than it was for the letter of the law. He wasn't, you know, he actually said, I, I must do the works of the Father while it's still light. Glory to God. Then when they got on him about doing something on the Sabbath day, he said, have you not read that when David uh, was, was, was hungry, they took the showbread and ate it. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And they still, that just made a matter. That just made a matter. Why? Because if they didn't have the law, they didn't have their position of power. They lost their power to control, to dictate, to demand, to be the final authority on everything. Was your sacrifice blemishless? No. How do you know? Because we said it wasn't. There's no instant replay. There's no arbitrator. You can't, you can't go and call in a, uh, an external priest to have him come in and check behind you. But right over here in the temple marketplace, we've got um, Hebrew priests certified. Blemishless lambs. Now, we'll, we'll go ahead and take care of this because you don't need it anyway. They go back and put it in the crowd after they got the one out for them. That's why Jesus overturned the tables at the temple. Because they had made it a den of thieves. They were stealing from the people under the guise of their authority. And they were ripping them off. Because they didn't have any say about it. They were required to bring a sacrifice. And so they got them a gig going on. Hello. And there's nothing they can do about it. Except God shut the whole gig down eventually. And it ticked Jesus off. My house should be a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. And they weren't happy with Jesus. Okay. Um, if that woman could be delivered because she was the seed of Abraham, being a daughter of Abraham, the seed of Abraham, she's a descendant of Abraham. So can you. So can I. Amen. We have a right to it because of our spiritual heredity as the seed of Abraham. Amen. Galatians chapter 3, I mean, verse 26 or 28. I don't have it right off the top of my head. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Glory to God. So we have right and access into all that God promised Abraham through Christ. Amen. Which means. Based on that covenant, because we see this in action right here, why, why is this in the Bible? Of the volumes of books that could have been written. Remember, John says that I, if everything that Jesus did had been written down, I suppose the world itself could not contain the volumes thereof. Now, we, we understand that's meaning it, it, was, it was, there's a bunch. I mean, just too many to, to record, okay? Not literally books, 
stacked up to, you know, Mount Everest covering the planet. It's allegorical. It's symbolic. He, he said, I suppose the world itself cannot contain the volumes there. You guys, know, their idea of what the world was, was right there in the Middle East. All right. So he wasn't being he wasn't being silly. He was just he was making an extreme statement to say there's a bunch, folks. We can't even record all of it. It's just so much. He did. Amen. And um, why of of all those was the Spirit of God highlighting this one? Because they're in there for a reason. The things that are recorded, they're there for a reason. The Holy Spirit highlighted certain things, not just to be random, but specific. I said specific. And this one he did it because Jesus connected our right to receive redemption from the curse of the law and the and what it brings on the earth and the you know uh, you'll be cursed in the city and cursed our right to be redeemed from that to the covenant that was highlighted by the Holy Spirit on purpose so that we could come here and go you know what I am now a child of God and I operate under a new covenant with better promises. In the fulfillment of the Abrahamic covenant being in Christ, he takes it up a level. It's even better. I said it's even better. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so now um, he's the mediator of a better covenant. And it's established upon better promises. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes on Wednesday night, I just, my legs are a little, uh, a little like, okay, we had enough today. <laughs> All right. I was on the back of a weed eater for two hours this morning at work, <laughs> helping my kids you know, get uh, an area prepared so they can put mulch down. Uh, Next week, <laughs> we were working on, I'm weeding, they're raking it all up and stuff. And, uh, you know, I don't like weed eaters. Two hours is more than enough. I got my fix, except we probably have another two weeks of it. If y'all remember last year, I had, we had to do this whole area that took about six weeks. We're having to redo it because they let it grow all back up. And my kids are going to get a lot of hours. You know, for the, towards their graduation stuff, but you know, <sighs> Hallelujah. Okay, so we're redeemed from the curse of the law. Now let's also talk about what we're redeemed from the consequences of the fall. Now remember, the curse was added later after the promise, uh, and cannot be disannulled because of, you know the promise is not disannulled because of the because of the law. But initially there was a curse that was constant was which was the consequence from the fall. Amen. Um, we know that when man fell, the curse that he was under was that of spiritual death, poverty, and sickness. Before the fall of man, he knew nothing of spiritual death. He knew nothing of poverty. He knew nothing of sickness. It took place at the fall. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis 2, uh, 17 says, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat. Oh, yeah. yeah. Remember that? There's no law. There's no you do's and don'ts and everything, um, you know, under grace. Well, he told them in the garden, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, literally the Hebrew says, we've heard this before, we're not teaching anything new. 
it actually says this, for thou shalt surely, uh, the phrase for thou shalt surely die is in dying thou shalt die. What do you mean? Adam had to die spiritually so he would be able to die physically. You can't die physically if you've never died spiritually. Man was not created to physically die. Never God's plan. Are y'all here? Well, now that we're saved, we're going to live forever. Well, spiritually, well, but you're going to get a glorified body. Okay. Your body is mortal. It's death doomed. It will die. Lest Christ return, your body will die. It'll wear out. Okay? It will evict your spirit one day. Now, we can hold that off. Now remember, we are filled with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of the purchased possession. Ephesians chapter 1. What's that talking about? We are marked out. Now, we could be health, healthy, have healing in our bodies on the earth. But you cannot stop death from ever coming. He did not redeem your body to the point it would never die physically here on the earth. Why? Because it's death doomed. It was mortal. Your spirit gets born again. Your mind gets renewed. And you have the promise of a future final redemption of the body. Amen. And you will get a glorified body. This mortal shall put on immortality. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. Hello. First Thessalonians chapter four. I believe it's first Thessalonians. First or second. Okay. We're going to have an incorruptible body. An immortal body. But until then, it's death doomed. But we can have it healed. We can have it whole. We can have it sound. All right. So don't think that, you know, some people still believe that John, John, um, the, not John the Baptist, but the Apostle John is still alive. Remember when Peter said, what about him? The Lord told him you'll be stretched forth, basically telling him how he would be crucified, how he would die. And he, Peter's like, well, that, that's great. How about him? You know, the one who leans on Jesus' chest. Okay. A little jealousy entered in there. And so Jesus said, what is it to thee that if I will that he live till I return? Feed my sheep. You do what you're supposed to do. Don't you worry about him. And there are people, how do you know, I had a roommate who believed that. It's quoted that scripture. And Jesus didn't say he was going to live until he came back. He said, what is it to thee if I would that he live till you come till I return? In other words, that was Jesus in the King Jimmy saying, Peter, it's none of your stinking business. What happens to him? You do what I told you to do. Now that is D that is D King Jimmy. Okay? It's not all flowery and puffed and you know eloquent and gentle. Don't you worry about him. You've got something I told you to do. Amen. And so, um, but the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou, in dying thou shalt die. Now we do know that man is a, is a spirit, soul, and body. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, I pray God, your whole spirit, soul, and and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Amen. Your whole pneuma, your whole suke, and your whole soma. Okay? Your whole spirit, your whole soul, and your, and your what words can we possibly get out of suke? Anybody want to get, venture to guess? Suke, psychology. Psychology. Numa is the spirit, okay? Soma, S-O-N-A, is, is the body, okay? 
um, I think there's a different word for carnal. I think but the flesh, the body is so, is soma. Um, is there, what's the, you remember the other word for carnal, Brother Bill? Okay. But it, also, it almost comes across like fleshly. Uh, Brother Cope used to preach a sermon talking about uh, carne. There you go, carne. Uh, huh? Carne Spanish? Okay. Yeah. Carnal, the word for carnal, meant fleshly. You know, you were carnal minded. And he would say, see, when, we, when I call people meatheads, I'm being scriptural. <laughs> Just a meathead. Uh, Archie Bunker was too. He was, he was accurate. Okay. So, man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. All right. When they, when in the Garden of Eden, when Adam committed high treason against God, he was born again. Not born from above. He was born from Demo from Satan. John eight forty four. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of him ye shall fulfill. Okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless to the coming of our Lord Jesus. Glory to God. He died spiritually. His spirit became alienated from God. Well, when that spiritual death entered into his spirit, it instantly made his body mortal. Death doomed. Now, it took 900 years to take him out. Because it had not known death. But now we go generation after generation after generation, and they've known death from the time of their conception. Their body has. And it, it's shortened. God actually had to end up stopping the process enough that he, he gives you three score and uh, ten by, re strength, uh, by reason of strength, four score. You know, kind of as a minimum to live. To stop that process from wiping man out completely. Because they were getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So God, God comes in and said, look, three score and ten or, or four score. Okay? When man died spiritually for breaking God's commandments, spiritual death entered in, which then created three types of death spiritual death, physical death, and then ultimately eternal death or the second death. If you don't know, if you die without Christ, you will enter into the second death, and that is eternal. There's not a stairway to heaven. <laughs> and I'm climbing a stairway to heaven. Huh? Okay. Sarki Sarkikos. Sarkikos. All right. I like the Spanish version better. Yeah. It's easier. Carne. Asada. <laughs> I want a fajita carne asada con mucho, mucho queso. Mm. Yeah. Un plato de frijoles. Eh. A rose. Hallelujah. <laughs> Anybody got hungry? You know what I said? Uno plato de frijoles? Uh, uh, refried beans. Rice. And rice. A rose. Uh, a rose con frijoles. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. Now, if you're in the Dominican Republic, well, actually, there's, there's different words because um, um, I, said, I said frijoles. Frijoles is, is beans. Refritos is refried beans. Okay? And uh, but they had habichuelas, which is a black bean. Okay? Had habichuelas. Huh? Jerry don't like them? And you love them. Lay your hands on them. <laughs> Say, come out. work. Jamie's tried it on me. <laughs> now, so we have spiritual death, which came preceded physical death.
But see, now before that, man would have never died. Had Adam and Eve not committed high treason and they, they had followed God, they had done what they were supposed to do, which was subdue the earth and have dominion over it and cast the serpent out, they'd still be walking around out here today in their bodies. Well, the earth couldn't handle. Oh, come on, people. Please stop listening to the nutties, the greenies, the crazies. You know, it, earth is not your mother. Okay? God designed it to handle everything it needs to handle. Okay? Then people just, you know, and of course they want to wipe you out while they keep staying here. So they're the custodians of the planet. They want to be the custodians while you're gone because you're the problem. They're crazy. They got demon spirits. It's the spirit of Antichrist. Why? Because God created the earth for man, not man for the earth. Hello? It's for his creation, not for... It, it, the earth is not here to exist without man. The earth was placed here for man. Amen. The pinnacle of his creation is man. So when Adam fell, he died spiritually, which in turn set him on a course to die physically. It used to bother me when I would read that and go, um, well, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And I'm at, I mean, you think, well, if that's what it should have been, it should have been. He went, crunch, boom. Until you read the Hebrew <clears throat> and understand, and you understand the threefold part of man, spirit, soul, and body. That he did die spiritually, which set him on a course. He did die instantly spiritually, which set him on a course to die physically. And began, listen, this is going to be a weird way to say it, began the process of unrenewing the mind. Please, please, please. If you want to watch 1 million B.C. or 10,000, whatever the movie was with Raquel Welch. We were not going around going mugga, mugga, ooga, ooga. <laughs> oh, 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 ah, eh. oh, oh, like a bunch of monkeys. Come on. And discovering fire and. Adam was created in the image of God. He named all the animals. He had dominion over the earth. Hello? He was created as the zenith of the creation, not evolved out of some ape line where he couldn't talk. Hello. I mean, you know, people who call themselves scientists create stuff and then push it long enough. Everybody believes that's the gospel truth. Did you know, no matter how hard they push it, how hard they declare it, how much whatever, that the theory of evolution is still a theory? But it's taught as fact? It's a theory. That's all it is. They can't prove it. Now, I am suspect of people who create testing that proves their point by using the testing they created. Just saying. Who says carbon dating is accurate? The guys who created it. Hello? They're, they're the ones who created it to prove a point. Now, I'm, I'm going to throw another one out at you just to mess you up. Does anybody know when we started referring to oil as a fossil fuel, how long that has been believed as an accurate 
Would you like to know the guy behind it? The name starts with an R. And the ends with an R. Am I right, Bill? Rockefeller. They basically made it up with no scientific proof evidence. But then the scientific community jumps in to back up his, his creation and make it so, number one. Hello. Are y'all here? You're going home. Y'all probably heard the, um, you know, heard of, um, was it Dianetics? Dianetics? Some of y'all about 20 years ago you used to see the book with stuff like advertised book by Ron something Hubbard or whatever. L. Ron Hubbard. He made up a religion. Totally made it up. Just made it up. And with enough money and publishing it and putting it out there, people started buying into it. Listen, folks, there are people in Australia who are members of the Order of the Jedi. Who believe in the force that the movies were made to unveil this true thing? They're, they're, they they play their Jedi Knights. <laughs> Hello, how I got over there, I don't know. But dear Lord, they are. And I got all over there because scientists said that man evolved from a monkey and he had to develop linguistic skills over time. But started out with mugga mugga ooga ooga. Oh, oh. Sound like a bunch of monkeys at the zoo. <laughs> I've not seen caveman. I, I, I probably won't because if y'all remember the Geico caveman came out and said that they were being um, misrepresented. Yeah. It, was, it was a um, slam on their cave manhoodness. Oh, that makes it a winner. So anyway, man was not running around the mugga mugga ooga. Ooga, 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 shy guy. Somebody remember that song? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm all over it now. Ooga, ooga, shaga. Ooga, 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 shaga. I'm hooked on a feeling. It was, a, it was the cover of the original, and they added the ooga, ooga, shaga to make it different. Huh? Now it's in your head. You'll be riding home going, ooga, 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 shaga. Ooga, ooga. <laughs> it's in my head. <laughs> come out. Come out. All that to say that man was a highly intelligent being who talked with God. God would come down and commune with him in the cool of the day. They had fellowship. Let us create man in our image after our likeness, after our kind. Now, our being plural, referring to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And let them have dominion over the earth. He created man, like we said, the Hebrew says, not a living soul, but a speaking spirit. And God would come down and they would talk. And I guarantee you it won't ooga ooga or saga saga. Some of y'all need to go home tonight, look it up on the internet, play it for yourself so you can get the full effect. It's kind of like I do to Shannon, but when COVID was out, they had a song by Deacon Otis Whitmore, Whit Whitmore or something like that, called um, Don't Let the Corona Get On Ya. <laughs> Don't let the Corona get on ya. <laughs> you got to do the best you can. Make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> and so I would call Shannon and say, Don't let the Corona. Daddy, stop, stop, Daddy, stop. So then I started taking clips and sending voice <laughs> messages to her. It was him singing. <laughs> now you got the ooga ooga in the head. All right. Enough playing around. He did, he, he, when he died spiritually, 
We're not talking about an unlearned thing. His mind was highly intelligent. But it began to unrenew. Or it began to be renewed by Satan. Until it became a carnal mind. And everything was driven by the flesh and not the spirit. See, before the fall, man's mind was governed by the spirit. After the fall, man's mind began govern, began, became governed by his flesh. The Bible even calls it a carnal mind. Hello? And so, setting into this, now, man dies spiritually. His mind begins to be unrenewed in one sense or really, or, or renewed to the kingdom of darkness. His body is set on course to die. He's under a fallen curse. He lives by the sweat of his brow. Hello? He's driven from the garden and an angel put in watch over the, knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, no, the tree of life, to keep him from eating of the tree of life in that fallen state. So that man would not be eternally damned to the schizophrenic state of living forever in darkness. Does that make sense? He had eaten the tree of the tree of life after he had eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he died spiritually. If he ate the tree of life, he would, he would be set into a place that he would forever be in darkness. So God had to drive him out of the garden. And put, it, put angels there watching over that tree to keep man from partaking of it. Well, until what? Until he could bring Jesus and get his spirit born again. See, then he could partake of life and live, have eternal redemption. Okay. So death, it doesn't mean, we talked about this in the past. Death doesn't mean the cessation of existence. It means separation. Spiritual death is the spirit separated from the father. That's death, because he is life. Physical death is a separation of your spirit from your body. And then eternal death is that eternal separation of man's spirit from the spirit of God. Okay? So, wow. I, I, I don't know. I ain't going to do that in two minutes. I can't do it. It can't be done. I guess we could do is Uga, Uga Shaga some more. No, 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 no. All right. Uh, next week we'll begin with the results of Adam's disobedience. There were consequences to his disobedience. Not just for him. But for the whole human race. We fell under the, the results or the consequences of his disobedience. And death reigned from Adam on. Amen? The first one is that Satan became man's spiritual father. And his lust we fulfill. And we see it right away with the murder of Cain, and Abel by Cain. That nature took over, and he was angry and jealous. Everything that Satan is came out in that one act. He struck out and killed his brother. And his, his brother's blood still cries. Hallelujah. So we're going to stop. Let's receive tonight's offering. A um, lot going on you, uh, tomorrow. Um, nothing's going on here at the church tomorrow. Okay. Um, I'm going to be doing, I got to go down to Linwood, um, which is down near Salisbury, and go to the place that has the corn sticks and pick them up. Hallelujah. Um, Larry was going to do it, but since Larry had the, you know, the event, that event, uh, what happened was Larry had a blood clot. They said it started about halfway of his thigh and went all the way down to halfway of his calf. And they actually told him that the devil was trying to take him out. If he hadn't come when he did, he may not have made it. But he's good now, you know. And um, he's, he's on heparin, and they're thinning the blood. And, it, and, it, and um, they put him on something else now after that that keeps the blood platelets from sticking to each other. And it'll, the body will absorb over time that 
that clock. Okay, and uh, but he's he was he, he's glad he went. You know, he listened. He listened and went. Had the right doctors at the right time, in the right place. Because his vital said nothing was wrong with him. Slightly elevated blood pressure because of the pain. But basically, but they looked at his records and he had a blood clot in the other leg at one time in his life. And they thought, we better check this out. And sure enough, so that was just the doctor doing due diligence. He could have gotten a, a um, emergency room flunky and sent him home. Hello. So praise the Lord. Hey, listen, he's doing well. Glory to God. Amen. All right. You need an offering envelope? See it back in front of you. Those watching, you go ahead and send electronically. Those here that send electronically, send electronically. Father, we bless the people in the name of Jesus as they give and sow into the kingdom of God. Thank you that heaven's windows are open unto them and you pour out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Brother Joe, go ahead and receive that. Hallelujah. Everybody be blessed. We love you. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Praise God. Invite some people to come Sunday. We'd love to have them come out and eat some. It's the Smack Your Mama Good Fifth Sunday Fellowship. Hallelujah. Big dogs down east barbecue and fried chicken. I'm the big dog. Okay, all right, that sounds kind of cocky. Je suis le grand chien. That's French for I'm the big dog. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, everybody, we thank you all for joining us tonight. And uh, we love you. God bless you. Uh, come join us Sunday. We're having our fellowship after church. We'd love for you to come be a part of it and be blessed by it in Jesus' name. Amen. Till then, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. That whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. Good night. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Tr